Today's gospel is kind of a difficult one. Jesus doesn't seem to be ask, acting like we would expect him to be. He's ignoring someone. Did he just call her a dog? Right? I mean, it just doesn't seem like something he would do. And so people have always tried to explain this, saying, well, maybe it's just the relationship between men and women back then, or between Gentile and Jew, or maybe Jesus was just having a bad day. None of those things. Those are all silly. Wipe them all away. Remember, this is Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, Lord of the universe, who was there at the beginning, who through all things were created, everyone, all of us here today, and that Canaanite woman, right? He knew her. We don't hear her name in the gospel, but, but he knows her name. And he knows exactly what she needed, that her daughter needed to be healed. So there's no way that he was just ignoring her or like, well, I guess now that you're bothering me, I'll listen to you, right? He had a will for, for her from beginning of time. So why this exchange? And maybe even more of a question, why is it in the gospel for us to be confused by? Why is that included? So what I want to offer to you today is that she is an example for us, this Canaanite woman, an example of faith. Jesus was amazed at her great faith. Not that it was a surprise to him, but that she is a great example for the disciples and for us now 2,000 years later as we hear this story again. And her example of great faith is especially applicable to our prayer life. And so I want to offer to you three ways, three aspects of her example that are very much something that we can internalize and bring to our prayers, okay? The first thing is humility. Now when she calls out to Jesus, she says, Lord, she does him homage. Now we don't know if she understood that he was God or that he was the Messiah, but at the very least she does him homage and knows that he is someone with authority and power, someone who can help her. And at the same time she realizes that she is in utter need her daughter is being tormented by a demon, and she's probably tried everything she could think of, asked all of her family and friends, maybe even prayed to her pagan gods, to no avail. And she sees Jesus as someone that can help her because she can't help herself, right? And that's what humility is, recognizing who God is, that God is God and I am not. God is God and you are not. I can't say this homily right now without God helping me. Right? That's what humility is. The second thing would be persistence. Persistence. So we see her being very persistent. She's calling out to Jesus, and at first he does not answer. Think of your own life, how many times that you've prayed to God, and you wonder, is he listening? In these times where it seems like everything's falling apart in our world, and people are sick and dying, and... Where is the cure? Things almost seem to be getting worse some days than better. And we wonder, where is God in all of this, right? Sometimes it sounds like he's not listening, but he always is, and he wants us to keep persisting in prayer. So she keeps calling out to him to the point that the apostles and disciples are kind of annoyed. They're like, if you're not going to answer her, can you send her away? She is bothering us by just asking over and over and over. And then, and then Jesus even has this kind of odd response to her. It's not right to throw the food of the children to the dogs, right? And so some of us might have even, if we heard that, said, well, that's an insult. I'm out of here. No, but in humility, she responds, you know, even the dogs eat the scraps, i.e., even that smallest thing that you can give me, Lord, right? You know what I need right now. Maybe it's not even what I'm envisioning, but there's something that you can give me. Even that littlest thing is going to be good for me even that littlest scrap. Okay, so persistence. Now, I want to spend a little bit more time on this one because in our Western society, our American culture, we have a tendency to think, if I just do a little bit more, I'll get ahead. If I just try a little bit harder, things are going to be successful. And that can leak into our prayer life sometimes. Leak into our prayers where we think, if I just pray a little bit harder, then God will answer me. 
or if I say that 13th novena, then for sure God is going to give me what I want. And that's just not what happens. Our persistence in prayer is not about changing God's mind. Remember, he's got an eternal will, a will of goodness for all of us. So just like he had an eternal will for the Canaanite woman to, say, to cure her daughter, he's got a will for you. And so you praying over and over is not to convince him to do something so he's not sitting there begrudgingly saying, well, since you bugged me about it so much, I'll, I'll finally listen. Or you said the right combination of magic prayers, so now you get it. Okay? No, he always wants us to ask. A way to illustrate this from my own life would be this. Now, you can maybe tell from my vestments and what I do at Mass that I am a deacon and not a priest. And I'm a permanent deacon, which means I will not ever be a priest, and I can also be married. And so my wife and I, we have a lot of children, eight children, going on nine. And our littlest boy, his name is Peter, he's just a little bit more than one year old. So he's just starting to, like, say words. He can say a few words. We taught him a few signs in sign language to help communicate. But when he's sitting there in his high chair and he wants something, this is his default. Eh, eh, mommy, mommy. That's about all he'll do at first. Okay? And so I can tell he wants milk. Milk's a good thing for him. I'm going to give him the milk. And I'm planning on giving it to him. But I'm still trying to get him to say please, whether it's to make the sign, or maybe he can make the sign for milk, right? To do something that's more of a human request and not just an animal grunt, okay? And as he gets older, I'm going to try to encourage him, just like all the other children, to formulate a nice request. That's how we learn manners, how to ask for things. But as a one-year-old, I'm not requiring to say, you know, Father, may I please have another drink of milk before I give it to him? No. And so that's the same thing with God. He's asking us to be persistent in prayer not because he needs to be convinced to give us something good. He wants to give you good things. But he wants you to ask for him, not to change his mind, but to change you from within. Right? So the more that we ask him for these good things, the more we rely on him. The more that we realize we can't do anything without him. We get closer to him. Even our will, we start to ask for the right thing. We start to ask for things that God wants us to ask for and not just the things that we want, right? And so the Canaanite woman, through this persistence, she's being even more conformed to Jesus, even more conformed to God than she was at first, okay? So humility, persistence, and then the third thing is trust. This trust that God keeps his promises. You know, we hear that Jesus says to her, let it be done as you wish, and from that hour her daughter was healed. Now we don't hear the Canaanite woman saying, oh, can you just come back with me? It's pretty likely that it doesn't sound like Jesus was passing by like her house. So she probably had to go look for him, like go out and find him. Okay? And so now she has a trip back to her house to see is her daughter really healed. And we don't hear any of this, you know, can you just come with me? That's probably what I would do. Say, just come back, Jesus, with me. In case it didn't work, you can try again. Or maybe you can pray over her in a different way. Okay? So she trusts at his word that he will fulfill his promises. Okay, so this is what we're called to do in our prayer life. This humility, persistence, you know, being patiently persistent and trusting in God's loving mercy. And at Mass, you're all here for Mass tonight. Those who are watching, you know, being, um, inviting you into a spiritual communion. Every time that we come before the Lord, this is the highest form of prayer, right? This is the source and summit of our life. And so this is, these three things are a good check for us as we come to Mass, or if we're watching Mass on TV. Am I coming before God with humility, recognizing who He is, that I need Him, and that He is the one who can give me what I need? Persistence, like are we coming to Mass as often as we can, making an effort? Even if it means we can't be here in person, are we watching on TV, maybe we're reading the readings, we're doing something to stay connected to God as often as we can be, being persistent. And finally, that trust. This little host that looks just like bread, and yet it's only with the eyes of faith that we can see that this is Jesus on the altar there behind me in a little while. Only with the eyes of faith, this loving trust in God that he's keeping his promise to be with us always. 
that he loves us and nourishes us. So I just want to wrap this up with a brief story from a modern day saint, Saint Padre Pio. Many of you have probably heard of him. He lived in the beginning of the 20th century in Italy. He was a priest, well known for his humility and his piety. He worked many, many great miracles. He could bilocate. He bore the wounds of Christ for like over 50 years of his life. Just a great saint. People would flock to hear his confessions, flock to hear his masses because they were so beautiful. And yet he was so humble, he attributed all to God. He had one great dream, that was to build a, uh, a hospital in the town that he lived in, in the town where he was uh, serving as priest. A very poor town in Italy, they had almost nothing, and so he saw this great need, and he wanted to build a church. I mean, build a hospital. No money, though. So how did he do it? Pray. We're going to pray and ask God. So he would pray. Others were praying with him. And so then what would happen is people would come forward and give money that could be used for building the hospital or people who were carpenters or tradesmen, doctors, nurses, started coming to this place. And now it is a very well-known hospital in Italy, one of the most advanced in all of Europe from the humble beginnings. And he said, this is God's providence. He didn't do it. God did through his humble prayer. And so what I want to offer to all of you tonight is this. Follow the example of St. Padre Pio and all the saints of the Canaanite woman who in her humility and persistence and loving trust in God, she was drawn closer to him. Okay, and we put our trust in the one who loves us, the one who knows exactly what you need, and he'll give it to you exactly when you need it.